Hello. Today I thought that we would find the slope at any given point on what I'm going to call a horizontal hyperbola. So we're trying to find the derivative. Now I'm calling this a horizontal hyperbola because it touches the x-axis, not the y-axis. We could have a hyperbola like this, and that's what I, I would call that a vertical hyperbola just for the sake of uh, defining our equation, which we're about to do in a moment. Uh, but this is a horizontal one because it touches the x-axis, not the y-axis. So what's the equation for this hyperbola going to be? That's just going to be x squared over a squared, and a squared is this distance here, a, and I'm, I'm writing it like this because it's a horizontal hyperbola. Your a is going to be the vertex, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, it, it's going to be the distance, in this case from the origin, to the vertex uh, of our hyperbola uh, because the hyperbola only intersects the x-axis, this a is going to be uh, it, under our x squared. That's just how you set up the hyperbola. Uh, and then we're subtracting y squared over b squared. Now we're subtracting y squared and adding x squared because it's, it, it's a horizontal hyperbola, it doesn't touch the y-axis. Notice if we made x equal to zero, which would be on the y-axis, we'll get an undefined term because this is all equal to one. All right, and uh, I hope it's well established that this is a here and then b would be about here on the y-axis. And a is just always the one that actually, you can think of it as touching the hyperbola, uh, whereas b is the other point which uh, helps to find the asymptotes, but we'll get to that. All right, so this isn't a kind of formal function that we think of because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So we can't just take the derivative like normal. What we're gonna have to do is use implicit, implicit differentiation. Well, I have space, differentiation. Oh my gosh, that uh, I think that qualifies as, as an n in some circles. Yeah, I'm going to call that an n. Okay, implicit differentiation. So what, what that is is where we take the derivative of both sides, as I'm sure you're familiar with at this point. So I'm just going to take the derivative of the right side, and we'll switch colors for this. I'm going to switch to red. I'm going to take the derivative of the right side, so the derivative with respect to x in this case, because, well, what are we trying to find? That would be a good thing to say first. We're trying to find the slope at any given point um, in the form dy dx. We want to know what this is. What is our dy dx? So the way that we're going to find this, and now we get back to doing our differential, uh, we're doing our uh, implicit differentiation, is we're going to take the derivative of both sides, and it will become clear very shortly, as in uh, similar to how we did it in our ellipse videos, um, why we are using implicit differentiation. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x of 1, and that's equal to the derivative with respect to x of x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. Okay, so well, the, what's the derivative of 1 on the right side there? That's just going to be 0. It's a constant. So that you can think of that function as being constant, so it's just going to be flat. Our y is equal to one value, so the slope is just zero. And now I'm going to split up the left into two separate parts, and hopefully you're sort of familiar with this process by now, and I'm going to take out uh, the 1 over a squared and 1 over b squared as coefficients. So this is going to be 1 over a squared times uh, d dx of x squared minus 1 over b squared times d dx of y squared. Hopefully that's not getting too squishy. And you can hopefully you see what I've done there. I've just taken out the b squared and a squared because they're constants, and I've separated the derivative out into two separate derivatives. All right, so let's evaluate these. Well, this first part is going to be 1 over a squared times the derivative with respect to x of the expression x squared, that's just going to be 2x, 
All right, and then we're subtracting 1 over b squared times the derivative with respect to x of y squared. And we're going to break this up with the chain rule because we have essentially an outer function and an inner function, or as I was talking about in the last video, kind of an outer expression and an inner expression. At least that's the way that I like to kind of phrase it because we've already established that y is not a traditional function of x, even though the y value or y values can be calculated based on x, just because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Yep. All right, so we're going to be, uh, well, what's our outer function here? Our outer function is going to be x squared, our outer expression, and our, and our uh, inner expression is just y. So when you do the chain rule, you take the derivative of that outer expression or function with respect to the inner function. So what that means is we take the derivative of that, where we say that that's x squared, that's going to be 2x, but we plug in the inner function. So we're going to say that's 2y. That's how the chain rule works. So times 2y, except now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of y with respect to x, and I'm going to change colors for this, times the derivative of y with respect to x. Hopefully you see why I did that, and that's all equal to 0. Now I'm just going to, uh, well, let's simplify a little bit. We have 2x over a squared minus 2y over b squared times dy dx, and that's equal to 0. Well, I'm going to add this second part here to both sides so that it cancels out on one side and uh, we end up with it on the right side. So we get that 2x over a squared is equal to 2y over b squared times dy dx. Oh, I didn't I didn't use the the special color. Well, we'll we'll get to it. I think you get the point. Um, but why not? Why not? Let, let's just let's just go over it with that color. Let's yeah, we've got dy dx. Yeah, we're getting that getting that purple pink in there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, not perfect, but good enough. So now I'm, all I'm going to do is divide both sides by this term here. So we're going to have 2x over a squared divided by 2y over b squared. This probably already looks familiar. Is equal to r dy dx. All right, so let's, let's pull this over here. We get that our dy dx is going to be equal to, well, what I'm going to do, because we're taking one fraction up here, and we're dividing by this other fraction, it's the same by multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is going to be the same as 2x over a squared times b squared over 2y. We're going to have this 2 here cancel out with this 2. And our final answer will be that dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, the slope at any point on this curve is going to be equal to b squared times x over a squared times y. And you can probably see that this look, looks a lot like the formula that we got for the slope of a height of a of an ellipse. Sorry, um, except that the negative sign from before is missing, and that's obviously due to the fact that the equation for the hyperbola has this negative here, unlike the ellipse. 